So this paper is based on a chapter of the, of the book, Modern Times, Literary Change. Uh, it's called The Surrealist Pen Mail, Picturing Literary History. And it was written in collaboration with Virginie Pouzet Duzer and David Martens. The Surrealists have established their own literary history, filled with ancestors and influences. This often took the form of an anthology, because anthologies provided the Surrealists with a way to collect and select texts. The pen mail constituted a visual application of this historiographic technique. Now, what is exactly a pen mail? Here's a recent example, a very nice example, by um, Mrs. Cole Terzaghi. Uh, so it's a pen mail, uh, the, it's a frame with cutouts where you put some photographs and this craft of presenting several random pictures focusing on people and portraits had been widely used for more than a century. It's a popular way of representing families and differs from the group portrait and from the photo album because it did not include captions and was often on public display in a living room. Together with many other amateur collage practices, the Surrealists integrated this scrapbooking technique. They revisited the pen mail in a literary way, presenting portraits of writers and artists they consider to be family. The practice of the pen mail brought together two important trends in Surrealism, the use of popular photography, such as photograph pictures, postcards, or newspaper clips, as shown, for instance, in the, the Paris exhibition, La Subversion des Images, and their inclination towards intelligizing. You probably know these two photo montages, published in La Révolution Surrealiste in 24 and 29, that show a, the, a portrait of a group at the present time. The Surrealist pen mail differs from these examples in that they incorporated writers, philosophers, artists, and other people from the past. This indicates that initially the pen mail was a visual form of a genealogy. While a mother, for instance, would combine pictures of her, of her kids at the age of, let's say, 2, 5, or 18, the author of the Surrealist pen mail took things one step further and mixed portraits of figures from antiquity, the Middle Ages, and the present day. He created a diachronic, imaginary, and an idealized family portrait that represented the genealogy of a group. The Surrealist pen mail then initially was uh, the photographic equivalent of the famous genealogy Breton, pro Breton proposed in the um, first manifesto. You probably remember the so-and-so is Surrealist in so-and-so. Uh, for instance, uh, Swift is surrealist in the nastiness, or Victor Hugo is surrealist when he's not stupid. <laughs> Today, genealogy and ontology raise similar issues in critical reading. <coughs> what choices were made and what for reason? What does the composition reveal? Both are interesting matters for literary historians. This especially holds true when the pen mail was circulated in the public domain, which was the case for the pen mail presented by Belgian surrealist Scutenaire in a journal in 1944, along with a text he had written about the very idea of the pen mail. In this paper, we'll focus on this particular piece and briefly talk after about two other examples. So, Louis Scutenaire can be considered a real specialist of the pen mail, both in theory and in practice. Scutenaire's pen mail was published in the magazine Intervention Surrealiste, which is a special issue of Document 44, with a brief text alongside called uh, La Justice Immanent. The frame consists of 33 writers. Here's the original, kept uh, in uh, Brussels, and here's the publication. So the frame consists of 33 portraits of writers, thinkers, and activists Scutena liked. Most of the pictures were taken from newspapers and magazines. In addition to original drawings, uh, such as um, Jari or, J or Jerzinski at the, on the, on the top. Um, Skitner used you know, uh, pho photographs of the Brussels group, which he put in the middle of the pen mail. So you can recognize René Magritte, uh, André Soury, and Paul Mouget, but also Messens in a picture uh, taken in a, in a group portrait. Uh, the French Surrealist group is represented by five portraits, um, obviously taken from one and the same series, and the same thick paper with margins, 
their excessive posing uh, gives them the, the appearance of movie star. That's the one here. And, uh, and Lenin is missing here, but he was standing between uh, Breton and Aragon in the, in the original. The seven portraits of the Bono Gang, the French criminal anarchist group of the tenth at the bottom of the frame, are also depicted in the same way. And Rambo and Lotre Amont were here. Uh, the mythic pair in the genealogy of surrealism appear as brothers in a design by the same artist called F.V. In addition, it is remarkable that some portraits, uh, Egger and Freud, for instance, were cut uh, without care. At first glance, we might think that these portraits are arranged in disorder, but the number of figures, their selection and the, uh, and the layout are no mere coincidence. What the PMM seems to do is map surrealism at a given time. The Brussels group clearly brought together and placed closer to the anarchist than the French group, which is, po which is positioned not far from Freud and Marx. Scutener put more emphasis on the anarchist figures than Breton would have done. However, they both shared a taste for occultist, ca occultist characters such as um, Cornelius Agrippa, here, and unconventional writers such as Akim von Arnim or Lewis Carroll. Scutena himself does not appear in his open mail, yet this piece could easily be considered a self-portrait. It seems likely that he is the 44th character in an attempt to reach the number 44 corresponding to the year 44, and that he is the fifth member of the Belgian group ca uh, characterized by a focus on imaginary world and political action. Therefore, it's not surprising that the short text facing the PML deals with the idea of justice. Scutena drew a comparison between uh, the portraits of criminals in police stations and the PML he wished to share with all the society. So that, I quote, poor people will, will not be able to lose sight of their, re of their revolutionary destiny anymore. So, <clears throat> like a religious icon, the PML was supposed to depict exemplary figures. But in this case, moral values are inverted. In this text, he insisted on the variability of the PML, which is progressive. The object is expandable, he says. He gave a list of people who are not in the picture but could have been, such as Picasso, Blanqui, Max Ernst, or others. A PML is indeed never fixed. The existence of a second one it's this one, kept in the, in the Belgium, in the Baker Foundation, in Flanders, is further evidence of this. Just as canons are in literary history, the pen mail is subject to change. By making selections and classifications, it functions as a sort of discourse on literature. As such, la justice immanente claimed the revolutionary power of visual objects. Scutena recreated the family by cannibalizing family practices, turning them into a public and political ones. A pen mail <coughs> made, of a, made up of writer's portrait can also be used to illustrate literary anthologies, thus becoming a visual anthology. Such is the case in the next two examples we now turn to, a collage by Breton, which was oriented toward the past, because it was a genealogy, and another one by Man Ray that focused on the present being like a contemporary snapshot of the surrealist group. Breton had been, found, had, had been found of the collage technique since the early 20s. And like many of the, of the images he created for use in the private sphere, the photomontage called HN was intended for publication in De Lumeau Noir in 1937. Even though it has no cutouts, this collage still functions as a pen mail. Writers of all times and countries were put together in the same frame as a family. The great ancestors of French poetry, Apollinaire, Baudelaire, um, and Rambo, are mixed with contemporary representatives of surrealism in literature and painting. The majority of the artists represented in the later anthology of Black Humor in this edition of 66, and I put the list of the of the writers put in this, uh, in this uh, last edition are already evoked in this collage. More precisely, we can, uh, we can identify 
49 people, 32 white horse portraits, and 15 symbols, such as a billy goat, a lizard, a horses, a knife, a photograph of the shadow of a swan, and even a cunt. But you don't see it very clearly. Uh, some of the images can be identified because they were common portraits circulating in the press, such as the photograph of Apollinaire in a hospital bed here, or um, Baudelaire photographed by Nada, or Rimbaud photographed by Carja, or Huysmans uh, painted by Forin, uh, or uh, let's say classical or famous pictures. And Breton further reused some of the photograph pictures he published in La Révolution Surréaliste. This painting includes classical portraits, such as the one of Charles Fourier or Petrus Borel, but some of them are strangely cut. The reframing was not so much due to a lack of space, it was a way to focus on the very faces. For instance, look at Usman's, whose face uh, is cut, or um, Poe, who is hidden here behind the end. And especially on the eyes, uh, for instance, you have the eyes of uh, Gilles here, and here I think it's Picardia. However, people are not only represented by their faces. Sad is represented by his signature, Arthur Cravant by, by a portrait in the boxing ring, and others are symbolized by objects or animals. Goya is the goat, Villiers de Lille Adam is a swan. As such, this female plays with the representative concept of the writer, using a, visu a visual metonymy that enables intimacy. This payment shows itself as a crucible that merges the portraits and ingredients of political and literary history to become an embodiment of surrealism. Man Ray, and I'm sorry for the, for the bad quality of the picture, Manuel's 44 L'Echiquier Surrealiste, so chessboard, consists of 20 neatly arranged portraits with alternating black and white backgrounds. It was published a month before Scutuner's pen mail. And uh, as an, it was published as an, as an illustration to a, in a poetry anthology. Because it presents a clearly organized grid, Manuel's chessboard contrasts with the disordering principle of the pen mail. Unlike Scutener's Pellemel and Breton's Collage, Man Ray photo montage shows only contemporary writers and artists. So it's not a genealogy, but a representation of the Surrealist group at a particular moment in history. Yet, even if the past is not included, time is still an issue in this picture because two versions exist and the first one has been destroyed. The chessboard is a portrait of the surrealist group, but one that is also subject to change. If we assert that Scutener's and Breton's collage are anthologies in and from and of themselves, it's interesting that the poetry anthology was illustrated by an orderly collage like, Man, like the one by Man Ray. As a matter of fact, if we look at both Scutener's and Breton's creation in relation to Man Ray's, the freedom of the pen male form becomes more obvious because Man Ray mostly plays with the title of his work and organizes the portraits along their background. In the upper uh, left corner, so the first one is Breton, and in the lower right corner is Man Ray himself as a signature. Mm -hmm. Moreover, you can see in the first square the hand, the hand of Breton, as a possible symbol of writing, and in the last square is the camera of Man Ray as a symbol of image. So nothing is really truly, tru truly random here. These three va variants of the pen mail foreground the personal outlook the surrealist had on literary history. A large part of the surrealist identity consisted of the choices they made between books. In a sense, the only real sur surrealist work of art would have been a selection of books mm -hmm. for a private or public library or a selection of text for an anthology. Hence, it is no coincidence that the first trace of what we call this anthologizing ambition of desire can already be found in the famous, le in the famous letter Aragon and Breton wrote to Jacques Doucet um, about the constitution of his library, and it's quite a famous example. 
I chose two pages, but you will find um, the original manuscript online in the archives Virginie was uh, mentioning. Like a surrealist pen mail, this letter is a piece of literary, of literary history, not only because Aragon and Breton became famous, but also because they produced part of a discourse on literature and its influence on the present. This tendency was reinforced in the first manifesto, which included, you remember, a list of ancestors, but also a brief anthology of surrealist texts. Other collective practices as well dealt with this question of selection from the literary flow. We recall the list published in literature, I think it was in, in 21, uh, where they gave grades to some famous writers. We should also mention that many, su many surrealist games took the anthology as a point of departure by picking pages at random, for instance. Apart from revealing a literary, st a literary strategy, because choosing the past we want means defining the present we want, this practice was something Breton was preoccupied with. For example, he used portraits in the collages he made for himself in the 20s. He collected during all his life uh, some portraits of writers. And later in the 60s, he even drew uh, a number of portraits. And here I put two of them, uh, Fourier and uh, Baudelaire. To conclude, the practice of the pen mail is just one of the many ways in which the surrealists express their preferences in literature, so as to turn literary history in a personal as well as a collective mythology. Among them, the pen mail was a highly creative one. Finally, the different kinds of pen mail and the various anthologizing practices were not only a testimony, a document of a certain take on literary history, they were also an attempt to change it. And when it's time to realize those choices, the image is always powerful. In this process of taking on the world of literature, writers' portraits in particular are crucial because they allow large-scale transmission. Just as the traditional group portrait in painting, the pen mail has a performative function and contributes to the formation of a collective identity. It can be used as a symbol for a group. When the pictured writers are dead, we revise them, integrating them into a new group. The pen mail also has a function of an altar, a place for devotion, upon which a collective identity can be built. Like a picture, in a way, of a rock band printed on a t-shirt, the pen mail is a private object which is nonetheless exposed to the public eye. This shows the importance of trivial pictures. The more the images are common and even familiar, the stronger the identification process is in a social group. But in surrealism, writer's portraits seem re sanctified on the altar of art. In other words, the pen mail is like a hall of fame, a pantheon. The pen mail is thus a literary object with a significant impact on the history of literature. It shows literature's dynamic process in a clear, in a visual form by means of non-textual materials. Thank you.